Bricks and Minifigs is your one-stop shop for all things LEGO. Hit the link below to find a store near you. So my name is Cameron Plowman, and this here is my mock of Omaha Beach on D-Day, June 6, 1944. And I just have the pretty much the entire beachfront up to above the cliff where the Germans would be stationed um, depicted here. Uh, you know, I have the, the Higgins boats landing with all the American troops. And this is specifically, I try to make sure it depicts the 1st Infantry Division and the 29th Infantry Division I specifically had in there um, because they the, the Army wanted a veteran infantry division on Omaha. And that was the 1st Infantry Division. So I made sure I had those guys in there. Um, I got the P-51Bs uh, in there, I got the Focke Wolfs, I have um, several Sherman tanks, probably a few too many, but still several <laughs> Sherman tanks uh, moving up, so, you know, just bringing some life and some action to it, uh, but yeah. 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 so Well, let's start out here in the water then, so you used kind of a whole bunch of studs here. Do you have any idea the number of, of pieces in the whole build here? Um, so I think pieces in the whole build is about 70,000 and probably half of that is just in the water here, just with the water studs. So so probably about 35,000 just water studs um, there. And then how did you decide to kind of lay out the, the landing craft here and what all do we have happening there? So I decided just based off of kind of like dry fitting it before everything was on there, I just wanted to see, I didn't want it to feel too cramped um, and with as many tanks as there are, it may still be, but I wanted it to be a little open, a little more widespread. Um, so I just kind of set them around to see where they look the best. Um, and that is kind of the, the layout that I got. And then um, based off of that, I detailed the beach with the track uh, paths from the tanks line, lining up on the beach. So that was kind of how I did that. It was fairly simple, just kind of set it up first before I did anything else. And then I kind of built around that. And you've got the famous obstacles that many people are familiar with kind of on the beach from D-Day. So what types of obstacles do you have represented here from the battle? Um, so it's the Czech hedgehogs, the most common obstacle that you see on any D-Day mock. And then I don't remember off the top of my head the name of the log traps, but the log mine traps, um, I depicted those as well. Uh, and those are the two, the two biggest, most well-known traps on D-Day. There were some other steel ones that I could have tried to do. I was testing them. Could never find a design that I liked, so I just went with this, and I think it looks it looks pretty good on the beach. So as we move on to the beach, then I love how you've layered the plates there to create more kind of depth and terrain, so it's not all just flat. So you kind of have a bit of a raised section going up there, and then on the beach, what minifigs do you have laid out there? What types of parts and minifigs did you use? So for the beach section, that question is uh, when. It, you know, as you go on a beach, you know, walking kicks up the sand, moving kicks up the sand. So I, as the front half of the beach, I textured quite heavily. And then on, on the beach, you see the pathways that the Americans are taking, kind of kicking up that same sort of texture. Um, and then, you know, as far as the minifigure parts, of course, brick arms for the weapons and helmets. I hand painted a lot of the, a lot of the weapons. Couldn't, I didn't have time to do all of them, but a lot of them are hand painted. And then uh, all just Lego Lego parts, obviously. And then the majority of these are the Brickmania sticker packs. Just to get this quantity of them, it was the best way to do it. Um, I have a lot of uh, printed figures up on the top, and those are all Brickmania figures. But uh, the majority of them are all just the Brickmania sticker packs. I think they look fantastic, you know, especially on a big diorama like this. I think they look great. Do you have any idea how many minifigs are on the whole thing? I think on the whole thing right now is about 200 about 200 minifigures right now. Very impressive, and you mentioned the tanks earlier. Now these are slightly modified, so what is the design that we have here for D-Day? So fairly modified for these tanks, yeah. So these are the 2018, I believe, the 2018 uh, Brickmania kit uh, Sherman, and then I designed them to be the duplex drive with the, uh, the, the, the snorkels on them. So they have, if you look at them all, they all have a pair of propellers on the back. Um, which is the duplex drive there, and then they all have the large uh, snorkels on them um, for being in the water. Yeah, so it's a cool way to represent a, a unique tank design that yes. was, you know, attempted to be used here at D-Day. Yes, yes, attempted is the word, <laughs> because that was one of the things, the, the liberties I took with this, um, historically on Omaha specifically, there were only actually two tanks that ever made it to the beach, so obviously having this many is, is not historically accurate and some people have a problem with that but I think it just adds more to the fun of it you know to the Lego aspect it, it, I think it looks great with them still 
And I know you mentioned your beach landscaping. So what types of pieces did you rely on heavily to create that? Because you get all of those different kind of changes in depth there, and it really does make it look realistic. What types of pieces do you use for that? So I raised the entire mock up two bricks to allow me to have the depth in it. And then I almost have, I did heavily rely on the 16 by 16 uh, uh, plates um, that are in the tan color. And then for all the texture, it's just the one by two, one by threes, one by ones, just all randomly put out to give it that texture, stacking them different ways. Um, I added some tiles for behind the tracks where the tracks would be, or the tracks had gone to kind of smooth it out. Um, but yeah, that was pretty much, it was fairly simple. Just a lot of 16 by 16 plates and a lot of, of small one by two, one by one, one by three plates. Well, that's really great. We'll keep moving across the beach then here and we get to the barbed wire and the cliff side. So I love the, the different colors that you've included on the cliff there and it really creates a great texture. So what was your approach there? Um, so my approach there is that I had done, I had done D-Day in 2018. I had tried it before and it was a third of the size of this. So it was still fairly large, but it was all, the cliff was all dark bluish gray. And while it looked good, I didn't like the fact that it was all solid color. And so I wanted to just try it this, this time, this go around, I wanted to try it a little differently with a bunch of different colors. And honestly, as I went on, as I kept building plates, I just added more different colors. And then I would go back and change a few pieces out. And it just gives it a more natural kind of coherent look um, to, to give it that more of a random kind of natural coloring. Um, I've never been to Normandy, but all the photos I've seen, they're not just gray. There's a lot of, there is a lot of plant life. There's a lot of sand on the walls, you know, so I think I, I try to get that best I could. I think that's a good tip in general when building any kind of natural area with Lego. There's always more color and kind of more texture uh, in real life than you might typically think. And so it's definitely worth kind of adding in some of those subtle hints of different types of color because it, it captures the realistic look better. Exactly, exactly. And that's, that's the, the approach I tried to take for that. And I think it turned out wonderful. Um, I spent the last last three days rebuilding that entire cliff because shipping it from California it got destroyed. So so I had to do some heavy lifting getting that really rebuilt for the show. But I think it turned out great. It's a little more fragile than I wanted it to be, but it'll it'll do. I still think it looks fantastic. So came out came out good. Yeah. Any any shipping pro tips you can share? Anything you learned from from the, the, what you've gone through? Just make sure it's packed extremely well. Pack it, pack it, pack it. Fragile stickers do not help. Just pack it as best as you can. If you can put more bubble wrap on it, put more bubble wrap on it. And there's no amount of bubble wrap that's not enough. So that's what I have to say for that because it is a disaster. Well, there we go. Now, what you've done here is you've actually kind of raised up the back portion. And so that allows you to, to make that cliff and then kind of have the higher portion where you see the Germans. So when you get to the top of the cliff, uh, one thing that catches your eye is definitely the bunkers here. So how did you kind of incorporate those into the cliff and design those? So those ones are also Brickmania kits. I believe they were designed by John Canepa, if I remember correctly. Um, and those were, I built the kits, um, which is just the bunker itself. And then I kind of took it apart to, to smooth it out, kind of make it a little easier to incorporate. And then I just kind of set the height that I wanted for the bunker. And then I built the mountain around it, the cliff around it. And that was really, it was fairly simple to plan it. Actually executing that was a little harder because of the different height and, and making sure the rocks or the, the pieces met up with the bunkers correctly. I think uh, it was it was some trial and error and it took me a little bit, but once I got it down, it was, it was really simple just to do, be able to do it like that. The lights also add so much here. So how did you incorporate lights throughout the build? So the lights are, um, first of all, they're Light My Bricks branded and Brick Stuff branded both. Uh, I was able to incorporate a little bit of each company into it, um, kind of as a, a combo for that. But for the lights, the bunkers, all three of the bunkers are wired up directly um, to the middle bunker. There's a, a battery box right behind the middle bunker there, and those three are wired up. Um, you have the two airplanes here that are wired independently of everything, just have the, the module and the batteries underneath the wings. And then for the three smaller flat guns, the lightsaber and the mystery box over in the corner, they're all wired under a box under that first train car. 
Yeah. Well, it really helps things stand out here. So I like how you mentioned the, the lightsaber. You got <laughs> a couple of, you know, maybe not quite historically accurate references. Oh, no, absolutely not. There's a few Easter eggs in there that are absolutely not historically accurate. You know, you got Spider-Man hanging off of one of the P-51s. You have a few Deadpools around the mock um, helping the Americans, you know, push against the Germans. You have a stormtrooper running through the trenches with the Germans. You have uh, the lightsaber. One of the airborne troopers found a, a lightsaber buried in the sand, and so he figured he'd take that. And then over there in the corner, you have a mystery box with some zombies fighting uh, four significant characters of the Call of Duty line. Um, you have a, a Dalek that um, Anthony graciously put in the mock somewhere, sometime. I don't even know when that happened, but it's there now. Uh, and yeah, I think there's probably a couple more that even I'm forgetting, but you know, I'm sure they're around. You have the shark in the water, you know, chomping on a guy. But yeah, there's, I had some fun with it. You know, keep keep everybody interested. Everybody's able to see stuff, you know, and everybody's able to pick it out. That's that's honestly the fun of it is everybody being able to pick out stuff that they enjoy, that they like, that that sticks out from the from the normal of what it is. Well, and then that takes us to the vehicles and some kind of artillery positions back here. So what do you have represented in this area? So I have represented just kind of some, some run-of-the-mill vehicles. I mean, I have a Tiger here that I uh, custom camouflage. And, and just to mention that, all of these vehicles, everything on here except for the, the train, that's all Brickmania kits. So they did a wonderful job designing all of these. Um, but the, the Tiger, you have the Opal Blitz loading ammunition back onto the train. You have a prototype um, broom bar that was graciously uh, loaned to me for the weekend. Um, and then you have the big 12.8-centimeter uh, dual anti-air gun. Um, and that is kind of the focal point of the top up here besides the train. I wanted it to be kind of the main, the main attraction for the top. And so it's everything, the trenches, everything is kind of built around that for that. Um, and then, of course, you have all the airplanes. I have three P-51s, I have three Focke-Wolfs, and I have two um, BF-109s who, again, were loaned to me by Anthony. He just decided to put them on the mock, so that worked out great. But, yeah, so that's all, you know, pretty simple vehicles. Uh, they're all various various modifications to done to them, you know, based off of what I saw in uh, in reports or action reports, you know, things things of that sort, documentaries. So... Yeah. Yeah. The planes really add a nice sort of 3D effect to the whole thing here and it feels like so much action going on. Yeah, yeah. so with those I had managed to find a way to manipulate two different turntables, one at the top and one at the bottom of the actual brick uh, shaft, brick tower that's holding the planes up to give them these really crazy angles while also keeping the gravity of the of the airplanes in in one spot so that way they wouldn't fall over. Um, so normally you wouldn't be able to, you know, bring these airplanes down like they're strafing, coming in for a strafe or, or pulling up out of a, a dogfight. So I was able to do that and I think it turned out wonderful. And you mentioned the train earlier and this train looks great here. So what can you tell us about this build? Uh, you know, it's a miracle that I got it together. Um, I, I used photos. Um, I'm, I have a lot of model trains as well, so I was able to base it off of those. And it's based off of a couple trains. I tried to base it the best I could off of a BR-55, a German BR-55. Um, and and it, it will run. It doesn't run great, but it will run. So it'll take some tweaking. But, I mean, that's my introduction into LEGO trains. I mean, I've never used the trains at all. I wanted to, but I just never got into it. So that is my introduction into the Lego train, and I think it came out fairly well. And then the train cars are pretty simple. They're just the the regular Lego uh, wheels, just with some flatbeds on them. You know, I think those turned out really well for transporting tanks. The with the the gun car, I think it looks fantastic. Yeah, the whole layout is just great here. So, do you know the overall size of this whole thing? So the overall size is it is 60 inches wide. So it's five foot wide by eight foot eight i believe so it's right under nine feet <laughs> right under nine feet yeah when you bring this to the show like world war brick what was the setup process like i know you said a lot of it got destroyed so i'm sure that made it a much more difficult yes. process so the process should have been pretty straightforward i would have just laid out all the plates um kind of got everything together lined up and then it would have obviously been figures and placement and all that but with that being said i did have to rebuild the entire cliff so that was, you know, I was able to, uh, Brickmania was able to host me a little earlier and I was able to come on Wednesday and I was able to get started on that Wednesday. Um, so I was able to 
get it all set up. I got everything set up that I could, and then I worked on that. Um, George Hicks, wonderful guy, he was able to help me with this, and he also helped me with the uh, the raising of the, the top section here. So I have to give a huge thank you to him. He did a wonderful job helping me. Can't thank him enough. Well, keep up the fantastic work here. Thank you so much for taking us through all the different details of the layout here. I'm glad you were able to bring it out to the show and all the effort you put into rebuilding it even once you got here. So thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you guys so much. Good talking to you.